it's evening. It's about an hour before sunset. They've come. I've been hearing a lot about how bad the mosquitoes are this year, but fortunately where we live up on the hillside in Anchorage, we haven't really encountered them that much. But out here, this is one of the reasons why I dread backcountry travel in interior Alaska in the summertime. Mosquitoes. Time and time again, we, we um, you know, uh, where my passion lies is the Bristol Bay region and Lake Clark and Katmai National Parks. Um, and I still, you know, after traveling the state for, uh, this is our 15th summer in business, um, but you know, my 20th summer in Alaska, um, I still think, you know, the Lake Clark area of Bristol Bay is one of the most spectacular places on the planet. Um, and the Bristol Bay watershed at large, all of the rivers just pulse with life. For this photo adventure, I teamed up with Alaska Alpine Adventures. Flying out of Anchorage, we headed across the edge of Cook Inlet, past the mouth of the Susitna River, through Lake Clark Pass, in between the Aleutian and Alaska Ranges, along Lake Clark, and into the small village known as Port Allsworth. Port Allsworth is one of many small villages in the Bristol Bay region, and in this case, it's also a major demarcation point for Lake Clark National Park and Preserve. We all gathered at the lakefront to meet our guides, assemble our gear, have a brief snack, and then load up into the float planes to head out for our adventure. We took off from a small bay in Lake Clark where Port Allsworth is located, flew out, and landed at our initial base camp location at Lower Twin Lake. All in all, it took about six different flights to get nine passengers, two guides, our gear, and five days worth of food to begin our adventure. We arrived, unloaded our gear, and each had an opportunity to find a spot to pitch our tent for the evening. After I was settled in and took a few pictures of our surroundings, I spent some time battling the mosquitoes to capture some beautiful evening light for our first night out in the backcountry. I rose early to photograph the morning light, explore our surroundings a little bit before my fellow campers rose, and capture a beautiful, calm morning. And then, before I knew it, our guide Nick was up, getting ready, and making us all some breakfast. I think what I treasure most about taking people out there is their reaction and response to being out in a true wilderness area uh, where there are no campsites, there are no uh, clear routes of where to go, and that sense of childlike awe traveling through rough virgin country um, as they kind of get to play and, and get dirty again like they used to when they were a kid and really, really get into their environment and feel it um, and feel small within that big country. 
uh, I think is probably why I enjoy, enjoy taking people out there. Hiking in the high alpine country can sometimes be a little challenging, but the expansive views and the photo opportunities are unparalleled. Uh, the kayaking appear, uh, uh, appealed to us a whole lot. We've, we haven't done almost no kayaking, so we said, let's, let's give it a try. Uh, Anna Marie uses the term her bucket list. Well, that was kind of our bucket list. And uh, just seeing what I consider one of the wilder parts of, of Alaska, uh, unpopulated, just total wilderness, outstanding. When you're flying out into the backcountry for a cross-country travel, the most common way to go when you're floating is to take some type of inflatable device, either a canoe or in this case, kayaks. After the initial work of assembling, from there on, it can be easy sailing as long as you don't have to portage. And it's why it's my favorite way of traveling the backcountry as a photographer is I can carry more gear and be able to adapt to more situations, whether it's wildlife or landscapes, and still get far into the backcountry. We paddled to the far end of Lower Twin Lake and set up camp near a connecting stream between Upper and Lower Twin Lakes. After a thunderstorm passed and the sun cleared through the clouds, everybody took the opportunity to relax, even our guides. Because little did we know we would need that rest for the rough weather and the challenging kayaking work in the day to come. Look at that rope towards the back. Yeah. So you're just kind of a steadying mic? Uh, I'll provide the power. Yeah, we got a little power in the back. We spent most of that day huddled under tarps and had to abandon our plans to move on due to high winds. We set up camp and even after a day of rain and a day of winds, we found ourselves faced with a beautiful sunset and sunny, clear skies in the morning. Definitely the highlight of this trip was uh, climbing um, up to uh, this one peak that was uh, 2,500 feet and just being able to see uh, so much so far, uh, be able to see uh, both of the upper and lower Twin Lakes um, was just amazing. After the layover day that had given us a chance to hike that high alpine peak, it was time to paddle on and visit the cabin of Dick Prennicky. For just hand tools, just the quality of all the notches, the scribes, uh, just the care that he put into it was for a wilderness type cabin uh, that could, <laughs> just real quality workmanship, yeah. Something, uh, I don't know, you take pride in, you can be proud to live in, I guess. <laughs> Visiting the cabin and understanding all that Dick Prennicky had been able to do by himself for the many years he lived in the wilderness really put into perspective our few days of hiking and kayaking in the Lake Clark backcountry. You gotta go. It's, gor it's gorgeous. It's um, I'm like looking around for what what all I would say. It's just a, a amazing part of the world, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a beautiful place that you got to check out. <laughs> 